Hi everyone, um, welcome to the Art of the Matter this week, Art Harun here. Uh, this week I think I would like to talk about the uh, office of the Speaker of the Dewan Rakyat. We have to appoint a new Speaker um, for the Dewan Rakyat. Uh, this is because uh, upon the dissolution of the last Parliament, the last Speaker would have uh, ceased to be a Speaker. Uh, one of the most disliked uh, officer in within the administration of the last government was, of course, our then speaker. Uh, he has seen he was seen to be biased, partial, and uh, in fact, uh, some of his action drew a lot of criticism, um, which also include, of course, I think. Uh, abuse of power um, and uh, that wholly unsatisfactory uh, uh, situation has to be addressed uh, by the present government. So um, let's see what's going to happen uh, when the parliament reopens. Uh, the parliament will be in session for the first time uh, since 9th May. Uh, on the 16th of July. So uh, let us ju uh, let, let's just see what's going to happen on the first day uh, when the parliament is in session. The first business of the parliament when it reopens is of course the election of the speaker of the parliament. That is the first uh, uh, agenda of the parliament. And then it is followed by the subscribing by the Speaker of the Oath uh, of Office. Then it is followed by the subscribing of the Oath of the Members of the Parliament. So we see how, how important it is, the, the Office of the Speaker. He has to be appointed first and then he has to take Oath and then only the Members of Parliament take Oath. After that, uh, uh, there will be election for the deputy speaker. Yeah? So let's see under the federal constitution who can be a speaker and who can be a deputy speaker. Now, um, the matters concerning um, appointment of the speaker is contained in Article 57 of the uh, federal constitution. So it says that the uh, Dewan Rakyat shall from time to time elect a speaker. And who can be the speaker? Well, the speaker can be elected from the member of the Dewan Rakyat, meaning from among the member of parliament. He can come from, from, from them. Or even if he wasn't a member of parliament, he can still be appointed as a speaker if he is qualified for election to be a member of parliament. So as long as he is qualified to be a member of parliament, he could be a speaker. Yeah? Now, the federal constitution also states that if there is no speaker appointed, the house of parliament cannot transact any business. So that is how important the speaker is. So the only thing which the parliament can do when there is no speaker is to elect a speaker. And that is why in the standing order that I referred to just now, the first order of business of this new parliament on this 16th July is to appoint a speaker. Yeah? That is the only business that it can do without a speaker. Once he is appointed, then all the other business can be transacted. <coughs> a speaker... Uh, has no vote, he cannot vote uh, like, like, like a member of parliament, he cannot vote. Uh, his primary duty is of course to uh, oversee and control the proceedings before the House of Parliament. That is his primary duty, especially uh, to enforce the standing orders of how a question could be asked, a motion could be filed, uh, how to adjourn the parliament, uh, to discuss uh, uh, emergency matters, that is all within the power of the speakers. A speaker may at any time resign his office 
and he shall also vacate his office when the house first meet after a general election so pandika amin the last speaker during this session he must vacate his office yeah or a speaker must also vacate his office if the house of parliament any time so resolve so he can be sacked by the member of parliament themselves by passing passing a resolution to that effect yeah a speaker uh, who is appointed from among the member of parliament if he is also a member of a state legislative assembly he must resign his membership in the state legislative assembly if he become a speaker of the parliament now um let's go into uh, the more important things i.e some specific powers of the speaker one of the power that i mentioned just now of the speaker of parliament is um, the power to adjourn the house of parliament the proceeding of the house of parliament in order to enable the member of parliament to discuss a defined matter of urgent public importance yeah so when there is a matter of uh, a defined matter of urgent public importance the speaker could actually adjourn the proceeding of the house to discuss that matter yeah um we have seen the previous speaker repeatedly refusing to exercise his power under this uh, rule 18 of the standing order when members of parliament time and time again wanted the house adjourn to discuss matters pertaining to 1 mdb for example yeah he repeatedly refuse he repeatedly say that the matter was not urgent or was not of public importance okay so this is one of the most uh, uh, important power of the speaker the other um, uh, important power of the speaker is actually to allow a question to be put to the ministers by member of parliament without notice you see normally when you want to put question to ministers in parliament you got to give prior notice yes but uh, there are circumstances where question may be put to the ministers without proper notice yeah um this question may be put if the speaker is of the opinion that it is an it is of an urgent character and relates either to a matter of public importance or to the arrangement of public business so these three criteria must be fulfilled to allow question without proper notice okay even uh, in this respect we have seen the previous speakers repeatedly refusing questions of this nature okay he will say no this matter is not of public important or is not of urgent character he always always say that yeah so this is also a very important matter because in transacting business there may be urgent matter which require a minister to answer there and then let's say while they are having a session suddenly that day some news broke out in wsg in wall street journal of a huge scandal and this provision is there because it will it can allow the member of parliament to ask the respective the relevant ministers without proper notice so the speaker then is empowered to allow that yeah so um this is also a very important uh, power uh, and need to be exercised by the speaker impartially without bias and with full concern for public importance and the urgency of the matter yeah previously we have seen a lot of abuses and i think even um refusal to undertake the duties of the speaker properly yeah among the uh, areas of abuses were we have seen the certain uh, private bill uh, being expedited for debate 
the RUU355, for example, suddenly it jump uh, even above uh, government business to be allowed to be uh, 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 debated. And then during the RUU355 as well, the last speaker allowed the government and passed to talk in favour of the bill and then he adjourned the proceeding without allowing the opposition to reply. That is also an abuse. And then there were times when questions were asked the ministers and they were not answered. Or if answered, the answers were very unsatisfactorily, uh, uh, unsatisfactorily given and the speaker did not do anything. That is a, a, a clear abuse of failure to undertake his function. Then, after that, the speaker uh, was also known to sack member of parliament to, to, to chase them out of the parliament uh, just for some reason or other. So that's another abuse. The other failure that we saw was uh, the speaker's failure, utter failure to control unruly behaviour, to warn a certain member of parliament belonging to a certain party, we know who they are, uh, from being unruly, from being rude, from using crude languages. And uh, even uh, from using sexist remark. We are in 2018, last year was 2017, and here we, uh, there we were, we have uh, members of parliament who were actually ministers or deputy ministers who used sexist remark on, on, on lady member of parliament, and the speaker just let it go. And that is why I think the office of speaker must be filled by a person of integrity, of who is fiercely independent and who knows the procedure of the parliament uh, like the back of his hand. He must be able to control all the member of parliament properly so that we could have a discussion and a very civil but robust debate of matters of public importance. Yeah, so that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching.